Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In today's lesson, we're going to start talking about generic code, which is going to kick off a series of another few lessons talking about things like templates for structures, functions, and classes. But with that said, let's just go ahead and understand generic code. So what I'm going to do here is just write a piece of code here. And I want you to think about what your definition of generic code is over on the right side here. So let me go ahead and write the function here. I'm going to call it my min here. It's going to take in two arguments here. And it's just going to return the lesser of these two arguments. So I'll compare x to y. And I'll return x if it's less than or y otherwise. So this is basically just a min function here that I'm writing from scratch. Now with this function here, think about is this a generic function? So let's go ahead and actually use this function. Let's go ahead and if I go ahead and write out the result of my min and some values like seven and three here. And then let's just go ahead and report our result seven and three. And let's just go ahead and make sure we flip around the values here uh, and make sure that this works with, well, let's go ahead and put three first and seven second. And we would expect seven and three to work here. And I'll go ahead and give this a run here. And it does work as follows. But is it generic in the sense that what if I put a floating point value in here? Well, let's go ahead and see what happens here. And the decompiler is going to complain because it's a pretty type safe compiler, meaning that we can't just convert casts or cast values from uh, floats to ints, for instance, because there are different representations and we want to be warned about these different types of things. So already in my sort of definition or what I'm sort of gearing you towards what generic code means is I want to be able to work with things that have different types of data, meaning I just want to solve for the algorithm, which is this part, the part that doesn't have any type information, right? Here's the actual algorithm for computing and returning the minimum of two numbers. And with that, I don't really need the type information. So that is the generic part or generic programming working without the type. So I don't have to really think about them. So if I go ahead and advance my answer to generic code, it means working with data with any types or types we don't otherwise know about. Because I might define some other type here that I want to be able to compare with a less than operator, and I still want this algorithm to work. The algorithm is correct, and in many ways, it's a very efficient algorithm. Now, as an aside, yes, maybe we might have to be careful with some of these comparison operators with floats and these types of things, but generally speaking, this is a correct algorithm, and we can at least assume it's going to work on all types of integer types here. So fairly generic code here. So with that said, the advantage of this technique here is that the pros are we get the ultimate reuse here. And you've probably already thought about this a little bit in terms of templates, which are often associated with generic code. So that's the basic idea of what I'm going to be talking about today and with this little example here. Now, just as a little bit of a teaser of things that we're going to be learning about here coming up in other lessons is I want to be able to do things like put auto here and just infer the correct return type. Now, let's go ahead and see if that fixes this example here. This way, it's just going to infer, well, based off of the types here or the results that could be returned, that this should be an int or whatever the type is. So if I go ahead and run this, well... I've still got a problem here with these types here. So we still need to fix this up just a little bit here. So let's go ahead and for now, just get rid of the floating point types, but we can see that this can work and D is smart enough that we could just pass in auto here. Now, if you've watched my series here, you'll also know that if I pass in auto here in the arguments of my function, well, this isn't quite gonna work here. It's gonna complain a little bit and talk about using auto ref instead which is a tool for inferring other things like, for instance, if this is an L value or R value. But we do get a little hint here that this can be used for template function parameters. So again, a bit of a hint here that we need to make this function templated, which we do by passing in before our function parameters, the template parameters. So we're making this more generic code here. So let's go ahead and just get rid of auto here. I'm gonna pass in the type for both of these parameters, so they will match for this particular case here. And I can run this and D will not have any problem here with this generic code. And this is the first example that we're seeing so far of writing uh, generic code ourselves in this series as far as my memory goes. Now it's also interesting to think about just looking at this code here and understanding what it does here is that it can be smart enough to infer the arguments here. I'll talk about this again when we talk about functions, but basically I didn't have to specify here that this was an integer. 
So in D, again, we can do things like explicitly specify the type here, but D will do its own deduction here to figure out what the actual type should be. In fact, let's go ahead and now put in 3.0F and 7.0F. Let's see if this works and voila, still works now and it's able to infer the type. In fact, we'll actually see that D, the compiler, what it's doing or likely doing is something of the sort here of basically writing two versions of this function here. So if I copy this, uh, I can basically have a version of the function here that is generated with integers and returning an int or a version here where I have a float here. And of course, we can actually write specializations, as I mentioned, if there are corner cases so that we don't have uh, you know, any issues in case there's issues of comparing, say, floating point numbers or whatever here. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see that it works just fine here uh, in our program. OK, because this is essentially the code that is being uh, generated here. Now let me go ahead and get rid of this. This isn't necessary. And we'll go ahead and start wrapping up this lesson. Now, the nice thing about generic programming or the reason we want to think about it is because then we just get to focus on the algorithm. In fact, think about your algorithms class when you might have been sorting numbers or wherever you learned algorithms, maybe just from an online tutorial or a great YouTube website <laughs> where you got to learn algorithms or various uh, programming techniques of, you know, there's no type information here. So this is what we want to think about the core of the problem. And then we can kind of abstract out those details so it just works with any type. In fact, let's go ahead and look at the deep programming language website here on the documentation. I'm going to go ahead to the library here and let's look at the algorithms, for instance. And let's go ahead and see if we can find one here. Let's find min, for instance. Let's look at a few of these. Maybe another one like, uh, let's look at any here. And uh, if I go ahead and scroll around here, let's go ahead and see if we can find uh, any here. I mean, you're going to find here that it just takes in some range here as a type here. Okay, so anything that is of type range, so that's pretty generic. Let's just kind of scroll around here. Let's see what the actual min algorithm is. And you can see it's probably pretty similar to what we found here. It's inferring the type that's returned. We could take one or any number of, algorithm, of uh, numbers actually and return, and then take any number of the arguments and actually uh, find the minimum value. So it doesn't have to be just strictly two. So even more generic, which is great. Uh, let's continue scrolling around here and just again, see that we see this pattern of our standard library, for instance, taking advantage of generic code so that it can work with any type, right? Because the folks who built this nice standard library for us didn't want us to have to think or they didn't want to have to think ahead about all the programs that I was going to write in all the different types. So that's the key advantage with generic programming. Okay, and we can see examples of this all over the standard library. Let's try to find one more as we scroll around here. Again, you can find to check if any number of ranges are equal. Again, a lot of places where you see templates might be an example of this. I don't see explicit types here for the type of range, for instance, maybe a family of ranges. Uh, let's kind of scroll around here. If I'm comparing two values, again, it's just comparing values R1 and R2, not integers or floats or whatever. Now, again, there could be specializations of those types for performance, which is, again, the opposite of generic programming. So anyways, folks, with that said, let's go ahead and just briefly recap on generic code that allows us to work with any data types. Templates are typically our tools that we have other things like auto and so on that make this easier for us. And we have other tools too, like mix-ins and so on, which will be helpful for just generating the algorithmic part of our code. Alrighty, folks, so with that said, Feel free to check out my site on courses.mshot.io. I'll scroll down to the D programming language series here, where you can track your progress if you want to go ahead and check out more D lessons. And as always, folks, thanks for your time and attention. I'll look forward to hearing your discussion about this, what you think about generic programming, if you've written some cool examples, some standard libraries maybe yourself that you use, and otherwise, anything else about generics here. Alrighty, folks, with that said, thanks for your time and attention, and look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.